AWS Serverless Lambda has just released support for response payload streaming. So if you ever had uh, built a Lambda, you will know that there is a limit of around, I think, six megabyte. I don't, I don't use, uh, I think I used it once or twice, uh, Lambda serverless. But there is like a limit when you build the response that is sent to the client. And not only that, a six megabyte limit, the response has to be completely buffered in the lambda response and then send at once and that's because of the nature architecture of uh, lambda because it has to run the function and to completion and then once it's done it's done it can't give you like half execution you gotta, how to gotta finish everything and then send that full response so they just release a feature where you can stream uh, the responses back to the client. This is actually pretty good because transfer chunk encoding, which is an HTTP uh, server uh, content type, has never been supported in this case for uh, Lambda. Uh, I think a lot of uh, developers will rejoice. Let's discuss this. So this comes from the AWS blog. Let's read and uh, discuss. AWS Lambda introduces response payload streaming. AWS Lambda functions can now progressively stream response payloads back to the client, including payloads larger than six megabytes. So that means they had, in fact, this limit at some point, right? Helping you improve the performance of web and mobile applications. AWS Lambda is a serverless compute service that lets you run code without provisioning or man managing infrastructure. Before today, Lambda-based applications using the traditional request-response invocation model had to fully generate and buffer the response before returning it to the client, which could delay the time to first byte, or TTFB, right? It's a very critical um, property in the, in the client side for performance measuring, right? What we notice here is the server has, because it's a function, you call it once, it has to run to completion even if you're writing to the socket in your code you literally have multiple writes right and even flushes to the socket that will not uh, send them to the tcp actual tcp socket it will buffer in the lambda its own buffer effectively and then once the function terminates they take your entire payload that you wrote and then flush it once to the actual network socket that is facing the client and it's not really directly to the clients probably there are like a lot of you know edges and proxies until it actually reaches the client right so that is the current limitation so what they did is the first time to first response is now much, much, much better. Right? With response streaming function, and this is not uh, limited to HTTP, of course, right? You can even do it with normal TCP, which is pretty important if you think about it, right? With response streaming, functions can send partial responses back to the client as they become ready, significantly improving the time to first buy, which web mobile app mobile applications are especially sensitive to so i think we can welcome if you want uh, the server sent events and lambda you can do that today now with this you should be able to i don't think you could you could have ever done that right because server sent event which is the event slash stream it's technically this identical to, to transfer chunk encoding right all you have to do is just send events like actual messages down to the client and this request this response is actually never ending when it comes to the sse right you send one request and it's a fleet of stream of stuff so i could i could say like sse is a kind of a special case of transfer chunk encoding which you can do pretty much anything you want like chat gpt is works with sse right same thing Send so one request, you send that request, and it keeps generating this content for you, right? And then displaying it as you go. So serverless is a very attractive feature now become, right? Response streaming currently supports Node.js 14x and newer runtimes. So now you can start doing your application all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't know if I, 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 I'm not sure if this is now 
a capability that you enable, opt in, or it just happens. Because if I can see like a behavior change, like if if your serverless now function all of a sudden starts streaming, your client might might freak out. It's like, whoa, what is it? I'm now receiving partial results <laughs> all of a sudden, right? And uh, you will you will see some performance of course you will see that results immediately but i'm afraid that the client might not might not might not know how to deal with the partial responses so yeah you, you might need to deal with these partial responses in your client code i might be wrong there but uh, it's just something that came to my mind you can also stream responses with custom runtimes you can custom runtime what's that Again, I'm I'm not really versed in AWS. I, I I think I wrote one Lambda function or two functions. You can stream responses via Lambda API, AWS SDK. Ah, oh, is that what it is? Uh, Lambda functions URL, including as uh, as an Amazon CloudFront response streaming is available in the following regions. Oh, it's not available everywhere. So uh, if you create your uh, Lambda in US East Ohio. U.S. East, North Virginia, U.S. West, North California, U.S. West Origin, Canada, Central, Europe, Ireland, Europe, London, Paris, Frankfurt, Stockholm, Milan, the Middle East, Bahrain? No way! So for those who don't know, I'm, I'm actually Bahraini. I grew up there. Africa, Cape Town, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Osaka, Seoul, Singapore, Sydney, Jakarta, Mumbai, and Sao Paulo. Pretty cool feature. They just posted this actually is today. Good news. I think it's a, um, so yeah, I think it's a pretty cool thing. I think this will enable massive, you know, fleet of applications, you know, because now you, with the support, especially to HTTP, if you're talking HTTP, then you now all of a sudden support this streaming capability like content uh, chunk encoding and uh, uh, the event streaming like SSE, right, server sent events. And if you have ca use cases where you must want to return large payloads such as larger than six megabyte that, that uh, limit you have, you can do it today. You can break your application the response into multiple six megabytes so you can download effectively more than that if you want it's just i think this six megabyte they put it as a as a cap to control the bandwidth in their network right because uh, imagine like having one gigabyte and just like flooding the network with one gigabyte at once at the same time right and in 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 each own vacation so they want to control that so one thing i can think of here is like another value is specifically with http of course this is not, not limited to http it's, it's actually any protocol right even if you roll out your own tcp socket and your own protocol now any byte you send assuming you enable nigel algorithm in your server side such that you can send bytes smaller than the maximum segment size right without actually waiting for an acknowledgement so you can effectively send even one byte or two just send it to the client if that byte is necessary for client rendering or client decision making or or anything in that sort that would be really powerful but also i see a value in particular http applications right if you use http with your serverless and that is the headers right prior to this uh we never sent anything from the serverless lambda to the client so if i send an http request like a post or a get the client didn't get anything until they get their full response so if you have a large response <laughs> unfortunately the client has to wait the whole Tra for the whole buffer to be filled with that six megabytes or whatever and then get the whole response including the headers and the body all in one go right what's the problem with that the problem with that is like the client will freak out right because like all of a sudden whoa what is this right the client doesn't know what the content is, is gonna get that doesn't know the content type doesn't know the content length 
right? And it has to do the calculation as the, in the same time and the parsing at the same time uh, as it receives that response. But with this, you can flush the header early like any web servers do today, right? You can flush those headers early and you can hint to the client about metadata about this response. You can hint that content length if you want, right? Content type. You can hint uh, the link headers, which is, hey, by the way, you're going to need these kind of resources. I'm not sure if it uh, makes sense in serverless. Probably not, but but this is kind of a thing that you can do with headers, right? Headers are, can be critical, like, like sit cookies or things like that, right? Uh, probably not a, not a good idea to do that, sit cookies. Like it, it doesn't make sense. Can you do a uh, host a page on serverless? I never thought about this. Like I, I guess you can, but uh, you host a web page all in serverless, hmm, probably. And if you do, again, I never never thought about it. But if you do, you you can do it this way, and you can take advantage. Yeah, I don't see why not. You can host a web page on serverless. It reads it from disk and serves you content, static content. Why not? I can't think of any bad idea about this. And as a result, the headers will be really powerful in this case, right? Because now it will hint you that, oh, go ahead and download these JavaScript and CSS. So once you receive the headers, while the index.html is being transmitted to you, you can make decisions about oh, now I need, let's go, let me go and request the CSS or JavaScript or other stuff. And even better, you can, you can send the early hints, 103, right? If your browser supports it, which I think Chrome does now the recent versions. So your, your serverless can send very, very early hint before even starting the execution and the invocation. It will say, hey, 103, uh, status code, you're going to need this. And then the actual final headers will be sent, and then the actual uh, body will be flushed. You know? I think it's a very interesting. What do you guys think? Are you going to planning to use this uh, feature? Let me know in the comment section below. Going to see you in the next one. Goodbye.